In a previous video, I made a three quarter circle skirt with a button front closure. I decided to expand on this and create a body section that will let you turn this skirt into a dress. Continuing that button front full up to the neckline, I wanted a very simple classic bodice with a V neck. For some interest, I added these elasticated sleeves to balance the volume on the skirt. And for added extras, I wanted to include side seam pockets and a tie belt at the waistline. I did not want to line the dress as I wanted this a weight I can wear in multiple seasons. Let's begin with the drafting. I will work on a smaller scale so it fits clearly on the camera for you. We will start by tracing your bodice block front and back from the waistline upwards. If you do not have a bodice block, I have a link to a video showing you how to draft your own to your body measurement. So head there and then you can continue from here. Starting on the bodice back, we want to eliminate the back shoulder dart. There are multiple ways to do this. I'm not going to take you through any method as it really depends on your body shape, which is best. If you have very hunched shoulders, this dart will be doing a lot of work and you may need to keep it. Decide for yourself and select a method that is appropriate. If I went into that here, this video would be just too long. Moving to the front bodice, I don't want this shoulder dart. That's no use to my design as this is where my neckline will cross. So I want to move this dart to the underarm side body section. To move a dart, draw a line to the bust apex where you want the new dart to be placed. Then cut the original dart out plus along the new line. Rotate the paper, closing the original dart, opening up the new dart in the process. Tape it up and add paper in the dart gap. If you have a larger bust size, you may distribute this dart evenly between the side and the waist dart. Just cut and move the paper so the size appears even between the two darts. Next, we will deal with the neckline. I measured on my body from the neck to where I want my neckline and marked this placement on my paper. I also marked from the inner neck by three centimeters. Using a curved ruler, I joined these two points in a pleasing shape. As we have removed from the front shoulder, we must ensure the back shoulder seam matches length. Copy this measurement to the back and join with a curve that is lower than the original back neck by about one centimeter. You don't need to be exact, but aim for a pleasing shape with no sharp corners. This is the area we will cut away. The front of the dress will overlap to allow the buttons and button holes to align. Just like we did on the skirt drafting, we extend out by the overlap, which in this design I want to be 1.5 centimeters. Measure this out and then amend your lines around it to meet. You can extend your paper by taping more on or as I am doing here, tracing onto fresh paper with all the adjustments made so far. As you work, be sure to add appropriately placed notches, labels and construction marks for whilst you make your garment. 
Finally, add seam allowance. I like to work with 1.5 centimeters, but you can work with what you prefer. You may find it best to trace out your work onto fresh paper at this stage of the drafting process to maintain accuracy. I always like my end pattern to be without tape for when I'm cutting out the fabric or storing my pattern away so I can use it again in the future. I find it neater and clearer to understand. Now we have bodice front and back. I will prepare the facing. The facing is fabric that attaches along this front edge of the dress to deal with the raw edges and leave us with a neat, clean finish. The easiest way to produce this is to trace out from your main piece a two to three inch wide section all the way around. Include the seam allowance as it will save us adding it back on later. It's really much simpler to do this now than earlier and you get a more accurate shape. Also add notches before you trace so they align accurately. A slope neckline like this can easily stretch out once cut. So making sure you have plenty of points to match helps align the fabric later in the construction process. Trace out this green section with all marks, labels and add cutting instructions for later. The skirt should be drafted as you did in the previous video, but measure the waistline of your body's pattern removing any darts and seam allowances as you go and draft your skirt to this measurement. It's common that the waistline on a dress like this will be slightly larger than that of a skirt just because on the skirt this contact point is what holds the fabric in place whereas that isn't needed with a dress. It will just hang from the shoulders and you will need more ease for moving as usual. The skirt sketch I have here is nowhere near the right size, but I wanted you to see it in frame with the other pieces. So you'll have a skirt front and back that looks something like this, which you can create using the previous video's drafting tutorial. You'll add your overlap matching the button overlap from the bodice, plus your seam allowances. And then we will continue this facing down the front edge all the way to the hem that we made with the green line. For pockets, I like to draw the shape of the skirt front and trace it off. I wanted pockets that were anchored in the waistline seam for this dress, so that it holds the weight of the items in the pocket without disturbing the lines of the dress. It's up to you what style of pockets you include. Trace out these new sections onto their own paper and label. Your pattern should look like this at this stage. With bodice front and back, three facing sections, a pocket and two skirt sections. The sleeves are quite flexible to draft and you can go as large as you dare. You have lots of flexibility in this style of sleeve. Begin with a trace of your sleeve block and set the length to where you want it to be. I measured on my body to just below the elbow. Now split the sleeve into six sections drawing vertical lines from top to bottom. Number from one to six so you know the order they belong and cut along these lines. Use fresh paper and draw a vertical line as a centre reference point in the middle of the page to help you. We're going to separate out sections, beginning in the middle between 3 and 4, evenly on either side of this line. 
Now the distance is up to you. The larger you spread them, the more volume in your end sleeve. You can also spread the top and bottom of your sleeve even amounts or measure a greater distance at the bottom. A larger top would equal lots of gathering at the sleeve head. So decide on your desired shape and then measure evenly from the line to the top point of three and four and then the bottom point. Repeat for every section. Now you can stick down the cut paper or you can trace around each part but the key thing is to start in the middle and work your way out, keeping the measurements even. I'm doing this quickly here to show you. Don't do it like this without measuring. Be neat and accurate. Once done, you'll end up with something like this with your six sections spread out on the paper. Join them at the top and bottom with a smooth curve. Label, ensure notches are copied and visible. Add cutting instructions and add your seam allowance plus your hem. I used a two centimeter hem so I could encase my elastic inside. Our pattern is done and we can begin working with our fabric. Remember to do a toile in scrap fabric before working on the real thing to refine any fitting issues you have. I used 100% red linen fabric by Merchant and Mills for this project. I've had this in my stash for nearly two years now. The linen has gone crazy expensive in recent times, so I've been waiting for the right project to cut into this. I cut all parts of my pattern, and in addition, I cut two rectangles to use to make the waist ties later. Starting with the bodice, I made the darts first. I have a video showing in detail how to make darts, including ways to accurately mark your fabric. I'll include the link for you to check that out for those who need it. One tip I find when working with any pattern where the fabric has no definite right side is to lie out your sections and work symmetrically at the same time ensuring you get a left and right side. To protect the fabric from my iron, I used the scrap from the cutting process to use as a pressing cloth and I tried to only iron on the reverse of my garment where possible throughout this construction. The waist darts were pressed to the side seams and the underarm dart pressed downwards towards the waistline. The whole process was repeated on the back darts the same. If you have included the back shoulder dart, you would do it here too and press away from the neck. For the waist ties, I cut two identical rectangles measuring 10 cm wide by 80 cm long. You can increase these measurements for a super full luxurious bow. Each rectangle was folded in half right sides together. At the end, I measured inwards by 5 cm and made a diagonal line to the folded edge leaving myself a 0.5 to 1 cm seam allowance clearance at the end. I sewed down the long edge with a 1 cm seam allowance until I hit my chart line and then pivoting with my needle down 
I follow the diagonal line off the edge of the folded fabric. Be sure to backstitch several times here to secure. Alternatively, you can reduce your stitch length to a really small number for even more security. Trim away the end fabric and clip the corners at the tip and where we pivoted. Now turn each tie the correct way out and press them flat, ensuring the seam lies on the very edge neatly. I should have used a pressing cloth here but I forgot. It's handy to keep your pressing cloth with your iron to prevent this happening. The bodice is connected at the shoulders and then under arms. Ensure you place your fabrics right sides together, matching all notches and that your bodice front are on the correct side. When working on seams like this, work in a symmetrical fashion at your machine. So go from the inner neck to the outer shoulder or from the armpit area to the waist on both sides. If you have very slippery fabric, you can get a significant asymmetry as the feed dogs push the fabric through at different rates. Another tip for getting a good fit on the shoulders is to very slightly curve your seam in the center. So begin at your seam allowance and curve the line down by a few millimeters. It doesn't need to be much and then bring it back up to your seam allowance. It's a very subtle change but your bodice will sit better on your body. Press your seams apart and then finish the raw edges. I have used my overlocker but you can use whatever method you prefer. I have a video link to the various methods if you're unsure. Now this is where some of you will have noticed I forgot to insert my waist ties into my bodice. You should do this all at once with the previous step but not to worry if like me you forgot because it's an easy fix. At the side seam of the bodice, measure up from the waist by your seam allowance. The waist tie will sit above this point and I like to give myself a small clearance of a few millimetres just for an easier time attaching the skirt later. So mark the width of your tie and I will unpick my stitches to this point. If you've done it correctly you've not sewn this seam at all yet and you can just go straight to placing your ties. Align the flat end of the tie with the side edge of the back bodice. Pinning in place and then you will align your front bodice over the top to form a sandwich effect. Repeat on the other side and make sure the points we made are matching. I always place the longer edge at the top so that the edge with the seam points to the floor and is less visible. Sew your seams as we did a moment earlier, catching the waistband ties as you go, or in my case, I'll just repeat that seam I unpicked. Your ties are now neat and secure in place. I recommend tying them together with no tension on them at this point, so that they don't accidentally catch these long lengths in any seams going forward. The sleeves have two rows of gathering stitch placed in the seam allowance to help us ease in that extra fabric we drafted into our pattern. Before I did this, though, I pressed up my hem 
by one centimetre and then a further one centimetre. This was the beginning of creating my channel for my elastic to go. It's easier to press sleeves flat, so try and do as many steps as you can before joining them into the loop. Don't sew the hem fold yet, instead do the underarm sleeve aligning the sleeve edges together, right sides facing each other. At the hem where we just folded, it should now be cool and unfold it at either end to allow you to align this edge the full length. Stitch with your seam allowance from top to bottom. Press the seam open and finish the raw edges. Moving back to the hem, Fold back up the part we unfolded so the hem circles fully. We're going to sew along the folded edge leaving a 5cm gap near the seam. Use elastic that is 1cm or under in width. You want the elastic to be roughly the circumference of your arm plus a small overlap to join. I'm not a fan of super tight elasticated sleeves, I prefer them just to hold me snugly and flex with me as I move rather than tightly grip my skin. Use a safety pin to feed the elastic through the hem channel using the hole we left. As you go be sure you don't twist your elastic. Pin the ends together and sew with a zigzag stitch at your machine. Make sure this is secure as you don't want it detaching during wear. It can be fiddly to get a grip but it doesn't need to be neat so just take your time and go over it a few times if you need. Tuck the elastic into place and finish the line of sewing on the fold to complete the sleeve hem. You may need to pull the fabric taut to stop the elastic bunching it up during this step. Insert your sleeves into your bodice. Ensure you have the right sleeve on the right side of the body and that the fabric is the correct way. I won't go into detail about inserting the sleeve here, but I do have some videos linked detailing ways to do this. Once your sleeve is in, finish the raw edge. Differing from the three quarter circle skirt video, I decided to place waist anchored pockets onto my dress. The reason for this is that they help to hold the weight of items in the pocket and prevent it warping the shape of the skirt. This is very common with foams now, they can weigh so much. I reinforced the wrong side of the fabric with some fusible interfacing and then attached the pocket as per my tutorial linked. You can't really see much here red on red in this winter lighting, so I'll just skip on ahead quickly.
With the skirt back joined to the skirt front, it was time to attach it to the bodice. This is as simple as aligning the waistline seam of both parts right sides together. When you do this, match all the major points first before taking care of the sections between. So the side seams, the centre back and then the front edges. Also ensure your waist ties are way out of the way and don't get caught up in your seam when you sew. At my machine I sewed from the centre back out to the front edge and then I returned to the centre back point and sewed to the opposite front edge. As discussed earlier, sewing symmetrically like this can help with an even movement on your seams. It's a tiny inconsistency but over a large distance like here it can add up, especially if you don't have a walking foot or just have an older machine in need of some encouragement. I finished the seam and pressed it up. Then working from the right side of the garment, I sewed one centimetre above the waistline seam, securing the seam allowance underneath. I had to stop at the ties, backstitch off and then begin again after the ties. The reason I did this was again to add strength into that waistline seam so it can hold the weight of the skirt and the pockets without warping. Differing from the skirt once again, the front edge was finished with a facing rather than being drafted as part of the skirt front section. The facing parts were all reinforced with fusible interfacing on the wrong side of the fabric. Each section was joined right sides together to the next part and the seams pressed open and finished. Once in one continuous piece, the outer edge of the facing is finished too. We can attach this to the garment, aligning the unfinished edge to the front edge of the dress. Match the centre back, the shoulder seams, the neck point and the waistline. Also match all notches added during the drafting. We will sew this from the centre back point to the hem and then the centre back to the hop opposite hem in turn. I cut my skirt facing longer than required, but don't worry if yours is the same length as your skirt. It's now time to grade this seam. Grading means to trim the seam allowance so that each individual layer is a slightly different size, with the larger seam width being against the front fabric. This reduces bulk. 
So in our case here, the facing seam allowance is further away from the dress front. So we can trim it down to half the width of the skirt seam allowance. Clip the corners at the V-neck and then clip the curved seams around the neckline. This allows the edge to lie flat. To help prevent the facing showing on the front of the garment, we will understitch the front edge. To do that, you stitch 1 8 inch from the front edge on the facing, securing the seam allowance below. Press the front edge and you will notice how much easier it is to roll that seam to the back out of view with the understitch in just place. It does the work for you and you get a lovely smooth edge. Also note that I am working from the wrong side of the garment here which is why I have no pressing cloth. Linen, in my experience, drops a lot when hung, so I placed the dress on my mannequin at this stage and I ended up leaving it for a week. I recommend 24 hours, but sometimes life has other plans. Surprisingly, this skirt didn't drop much at all and I didn't have to trim much off to level the hem. I followed the exact same process as on my skirt, finishing the raw edge and turning under by 1cm with my iron. Then hand stitching with a herringbone stitch into place with no visible stitch marks on the front of my garment. The buttonholes and buttons were also sewn in the same manner as the skirt, nothing changed. With any buttonholes, I recommend refining your settings and size on scrap fabric before working on your actual garment. And I also recommend beginning on a non-visibly dominant button. The button you'll likely mess up is the first, so don't do the topmost seam button at the centre front neckline. Any mistake will be glaringly obvious. Pick one somewhere else to iron out any kinks and build your confidence. I chose wooden buttons, I have never used these before, I like the look but I'm worried the colour will stain my fabric so I'm going to watch them and see how they go, I'll replace them if I need to. So here is the finished dress, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. This style is very me, classic and a little bit vintage inspired but not in your face. I was really nervous cutting this fabric because of the expense and I also adore the colour and wanted to get a garment I'd love to wear for a long time. I'm glad I chose it for this project. The sleeve turned out a nice size without being too over the top and I really like this thick bow at the back. It reminds me of the old style aprons like you see in Cinderella. I hope you have enjoyed today's video and it's given you some ways to expand on the previous tutorial on circle skirts. Learning to draft can be intimidating at the beginning but it's really worth the time in the end to create this mix and match pattern library of your own. Please hit the like button, it helps me get seen and if you want to see more hit subscribe and you'll get more videos like this soon. Happy sewing!